Greetings, everybody. Welcome to episode 148 of the Masterclass. My name is Cam Brennan, and of course, I am joined by my good friend, Mr. David Hogue. What's up? Hey, it's cold and rainy here. Well, it's it's October, Dave. It's cold and rainy everywhere. At least in the north, was, northern hemisphere. But it was like nice here a couple of days ago. Oh. Now they're talking about two inches of snow and all that kind of good stuff. Praise be to God. <laughs> this is my time of year, sir. I'm so excited. Yes, I, I, I do enjoy this time of year. It is the only time of the year where we have all five major sports. Ah, yeah. Football, basketball, hockey, baseball, and soccer are all happening right now. They are. In the United States and, and elsewhere. And Michigan had a big win this week. Uh, Michigan destroyed Notre Dame and all is right <laughs> in the universe again until we get walloped by Ohio State at the end of the year. It's going to be ugly. I sound happy about it, but, you know, it's just, it's inevitable. It hasn't been a rivalry for 10 years. <laughs> and any Michigan fan who tells you otherwise is, well, they're living in the Love. past. Yeah, they're living in the past, man. Lloyd Carr hasn't been the coach in a really long time. But anyways, yeah, no, fall is wonderful. I love it. All the leaves are various shades of red and pink and orange and yellow. And it's one of the favorite things about the town that I live in, um, unlike where Dave currently lives or where I used to live, is that there's trees everywhere and they're all really, really old. So they're massive. And like a lot of the streets are like, like a hallway through trees essentially. And it's just this time of the year, it's incredibly beautiful. It makes winter a bit dull. Cause you see all the, you know, hundreds and hundreds <laughs> and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trees with nothing on them. But the fall time is very lovely. It's, I, I will argue that it's fairly lovely around here, but the trees probably aren't quite as old as where you're at in certain parts. Yeah, it's just, it's lovely, and I enjoy it, and I'm, you know, I'd love two inches of snow, Dave. Mm. Anyways, this is not a show about the weather. <laughs> and weather is often the topic of small talk, Dave, so I feel like we just, on our 140th episode, had small talk. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. We have we don't we don't talk about the weather a whole lot. So well, no, that's because we're actual friends and we have you know real things to talk about. <laughs> or so I this thought. Is, this is true. This is true. Anyways, we are uh, we are still in Romans, as we have been for quite a while. But it's one of those books, you know. Yeah. Well, we've spent the last almost what is it? Are we coming up on six years, or is it five years? Okay, five. so we're coming on five years. Yeah, so we spent the last five years in two books. Yeah, uh, I, I, uh, what's the word? Um, speed is not our forte. <laughs> no, and and you know what? I I actually quite enjoy that. I enjoy the fact that we're not in any hurry to get through a book. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure if this was a preaching series, we'd have been fired about four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> All he talks about is Matthew and this Jesus guy. I don't understand why he's so hung up on it. Yes. And that's, you know, I think that's, um, we should all be willing to kind of spend time in a book of the Bible and not be in such a hurry to kind of check off our to-do. We've We've read it. We've moved on. We're on the next thing, so patting ourselves on the back a little bit, I guess. I agree, but there's also some, something to be said for actually reading the Bible. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether it's long or short, short, no, is, I, yeah, short is better than not. And, um, trying to, I'm trying to get my teenagers in my youth group to realize that like, you know, the Bible is big, but it's it's not that scary. 
in most places. No. no. And there is a table of contents, and if you have questions, bring them to youth group. But, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Fourth yeah, on no, initiative, I, you know. I'll speak for myself of just very much in that mode of checking things off and saying, I did it. And not having an ability to just kind of be in a particular book. So, I appreciate you for that. Thanks. <laughs> um, I'm going to get to the business real quick, and then we can hop into the Bible. Okay. Cool. So, the business is this, folks. This is a podcast. And I guess that's really it. Oh, reviews. That's what it was. <laughs> reviews. Sorry. I forgot what, where I was going with that. Yeah, this is a podcast. And what's helpful when people are looking for new podcasts is to look at reviews and see what other humans say about the show. And we've got a couple of reviews. Most of them don't have any words. They're just star ratings, which is fine. I think someone gave us a one star, which, hey, you know, great. I don't know who gave us the one star. They didn't say why. They just gave it to us. So that's fair. We asked for reviews and we got one. Uh, we have other ratings as well. But it would be very, very cool if you wanted to leave a review uh, on the iTunes uh, podcast directory thingamajig. I'll have a link in the show notes. Um, and just kind of share your thoughts so that when other people come across the show, they'll have, you know, uh, some positives and some negatives, um, about the show so that they can choose if this is something that they want to listen to. Um, I don't know about you, but when I see a show that has no reviews from real humans, I'm probably not going to listen to it. But if I see one that has reviews by real humans and they make sense, I think, Oh, okay. I might give this a shot. So that's all just asking. You could do that for us. That'd be super cool. Cause it'd be really weird if Dave and I left reviews on the podcast that we host. Like that'd be super shady. Right. And not at all weird. <laughs> I mean, very weird. So we're not going to do that, but if you wanted to, that'd be great. Uh, okay. Commercial over End scene. I don't think I did very good. I think I've left a review. You left a review on our own show, Dave. <sighs> no. Okay. <sighs> you got me. <laughs> Still got it. Yep. No, I have not. Good. I was going to podcast shame you. Not public, because then it won't. I mean, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, we're in Romans chapter 13 today. Dave's getting his spectacles yes, on. Yes, we are. I am. Spectacles. Mm -hmm. Where did that? Where did that come from? That term. Yeah, I guess you're a spectator. No, I didn't think about it that way. You spectate. Yeah, but you can do that without those. Just not very uh, accurately, I suppose. <laughs> I cannot know. So we are in Romans 13. We're going to read verses 1 through 7 in the ESV. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his, his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. 
Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For, God, for because of this, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God. Attending to this very thing, pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Respect to whom respect is owed. Honor to whom honor is owed. There's a lot. Here, upon further inspection, <laughs> that I think is going to make some people very happy, and I think make other people very much not so happy. Sure. What say you, sir? Well, as I was sharing with you earlier, uh, Romans 13 is one of those verses for me that... Um, being in law enforcement, people tend to um, want to quote when it's convenient for them to quote it, uh, but may not necessarily always um, adhere to what the Bible has to say in terms of our behavior. So um, I certainly believe this verse has its place. I certainly think that uh, there is truth to the fact that uh, God has determined who the authorities are. And if those authorities are operating uh, justly in pursuing the truth and what should be done, then Yes, we should certainly um, adhere to that. But it is not unreasonable. It is not, I'm sure, for the listener to quickly come up with a list of times where uh, just because somebody's an authority doesn't mean that they are the type of person that we should obey, listen to, submit to. And so... Um, I think on a very generic level, um, I can accept this because I do believe in a big God. I believe in a God that is sovereign. I believe in a God that knows who is who and who's in power. And that if we submit to the authorities, um, he will honor that. I think that's the intent is for there to be a sense of, um, rules, guidelines, laws for us to follow. But even as I say that, I do know, um, and I think our listeners know as well, that there are times where it is probably appropriate uh, to stand up to those in authority and challenge their authority and question sort of their legitimacy and yeah I mean there's examples in the Bible of that where it's applauded as good and God honoring behavior to stand up to the authorities like I think of you know Daniel you know not giving up his faith in God and not giving up his prayer and not giving up his diet right that he felt God had called him to and it wound up being a positive thing, you know, same with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, you know, Jesus standing up to Pharisees, and David standing up to uh, Goliath, and he's a Philistine, right? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, you know, in these, in these people standing up in the face of authority that was overtly against God. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's easy to see in this passage that Paul is not talking about those types of people. He's not talking about Hitler or, you know, any of a number of more modern you know, examples of, of governmental authorities that were, you know, evil or really darn close to it in, in some other circumstances, right? Um, that doesn't mean that, that God didn't either appoint those folks or allow for them to be appointed because it happened, right? 
Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like I remember when our current president got elected, that there was a lot of people on the more conservative end of the political spectrum saying that Donald Trump is, is president because he's God's president. And I remember like a lot of my friends were like, yeah, that doesn't mean that it's a good thing though. Like that doesn't mean that God <laughs> appointed him because he embodies all that, you know, God wants in a man and a leader. It could be quite the opposite. God, God may have appointed him or allowed him to be appointed, uh, for, you know, uh, uh, maybe some introspection on the American Christian, you know, behalf, but Hey, this is really easy to get into political, uh, you know, differences. And I don't want to throw certain parties under the bus. Cause that's not what, you know, the show or really I am about, but it is, it is interesting when you start thinking about, okay, God, God is the ultimate authority. And there's a lot of different authorities throughout, you know, our lives. And I guess the question I have is, is how, and I don't know if there's an answer to this, but like how involved is he in the appointments of those authorities, you know? I don't know. Is it, is it, he is, he is actively choosing every single, you know, situation or is he choosing some and letting others happen as they may, because to your point, he's big enough to handle any outcome. I don't know, but I am curious about it. Yeah. And you know, I think, I think to your point, I find it very interesting that when the candidate who wins aligns with how we view things ideologically, we're very much to jump on the, well, God ordained this person to be, the president, and yet when they do not yeah, align we're, with our... We're assigning causality to something that we don't really have any proof or reason to assign causality to, right? Right. It just It's just convenient for our narrative yeah. that this happened. Yeah, and, and you know, so... Um, I, I, I suppose for me personally... When it comes to world world leaders, um, I guess I, I I'm hopeful that God is has a say in in who the world leaders are, whether they're good or they're bad, uh, because I want there to kind of be an element of even if they're a bad leader, it's like okay, God knows that they're a bad leader. God knows that they're in place. <laughs> And there's clearly a reason for him to put this person uh, in this position. And, you know, we can, we can even go back to King David and Saul. And, and really there's an element of, uh, you know, God's hand was a part of Saul um, being the king of Israel. And I think there's a lot of people that would you know, looking at that would say he was not a good king. He was not a good leader. But yet, if you read the scripture, there's certainly an, there's, there's an essence of God's hand was a part of him becoming the king. And I guess you could argue that it was to set up for King David to be the king. Uh, there's a lot of, let us, you know, you can always put a spin on it. Um, But I truly think it has less to do with um, our comfort. It has less to do with a worldly perspective, uh, an earthly perspective, and it has much more to do with a, a, a kingdom perspective. And um, I'm grateful for the fact that God is sovereign and that he will step in and he will do his thing. And, um, even as I'm saying that, I guess, you know, for us in modern times, the one that, that is coming to my mind is Hitler and why was he allowed, 
the power that he was given? Why was he allowed to do uh, what he did? And um, because I'm not uh, as educated and aware of, of world events as I probably should be, I'm sure there's an infinite number or a significant number of world leaders who, for the people that they govern, who the people that they rule over, have had probably even a worse impact on them and their lives than Hitler did. And yet somehow they've managed to come to power and have an influence over people in their lives, um, even to the point of uh, people's lives being miserable, uh, people's lives not... um, being as long as they should be, that their lives are shortened because of a person being in power. So um, those are those are difficult things to wrestle with uh, when you believe that there's a sovereign God uh, who de- who desires the best for His people. Yeah, I find myself coming back to like the the childish thought that well, if God is good and God is love, then why would, why would he ever allow anything bad to happen? You know, like, yeah. and so that's why like in college, you know, one of my professors is like, all right, class, we're going to solve the problem of evil today. I wanted to be like, I think viewing it that way is like, we're not six. God and bad can exist in the same, like, I, I didn't see it as a problem. And I know I've probably, I've mentioned that because that's like one of the things that's like, touted as like, oh, this great theological and philosophical debate. And I'm just like, I really don't think it is. I think, I think people that focus on that are missing uh, a piece of the puzzle. And that piece of the puzzle is that God is God. And if he wants to allow something to happen, then he can. Yeah. And yeah. It's, not like, it's not like evil is the opposite of God. Like, it's not like some equal counterpart than, you know, like yin and yang. certain, yeah, some certain, certain religions or, you know, mythologies like, oh, the, 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 the two eternal powers at battle. It's not like Star Wars, you know, the, the, the force versus the, the Jedi versus the Sith or whatever. Like they're not equal. No, God is bigger than evil. Yeah. And so like, and I don't want to minimize it because obviously evil happens all the time and it grossly impacts the lives of hundreds of thousands of people a day regularly. And so I'm not trying to minimize the actual pain or suffering or oppression or any of that stuff. What I'm trying to say is the theological and philosophical debate that people get into about it. It I just, it misses the point to me because it raises evil up to a position it doesn't belong in it. And it brings God down to a position he doesn't belong in, in the sense that one can not exist while the other does. Anyways, um, so why did I get on that tangent? <laughs> oh, because as we're reading this, you know, like I read Paul's and it's like, oh, just, you know, follow the authority and, you know, do good. And like the whole point where he says, um, for rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Uh, to do what is good and you will receive the approval of the, like, okay, that's like, you know, pretty sound advice if the ruler is a decent human being that has, you know, like normal expectations. Um, and it's true. Like laws exist for bad guys, not for good guys. Right. That's why, you know, my dad, my dad always said when I like lock stuff, he's like, why are you locking that? I'm like, to keep it safe. He's like, you think a lock is going to stop a bad guy from getting into the car? Well, no, he goes, locks are for the good guys. (laughs) That's a really particular, you know, worldview. But, um, so anyways, I'm having all this thought and like, we're talking about like, you know, Hitler or just these people that have, that have created, um, so much just death and, and evil and, and horror. And I'm thinking to myself, I have the thought, well, how the heck God allow that? How could a good and loving God let that happen? And that's what got me on that whole tangent of, of like the problem of evil is like, just because I can't 
understand why God would allow that to happen doesn't therefore mean that God couldn't allow it to happen. Like my understanding does not dictate God's, you know, providence and God's right. sovereignty. And that's, that is a hard thing in this instance to, to come to grips with. Right. Because in my mind, and I think pretty much everyone else's mind allowing what Hitler and the rest of the Nazis did allowing that to occur doesn't make any sense. And you think about all the other, you know, stories we have of genocide, you know, in, in Africa and in Southeast Asia throughout all of history, right? It's happened, you know, more times than, you know, it ever, you know, one is one too many times. Um, but this really does bring the point up of, of my lack of understanding does not uh, dictate God's sovereignty, right? Like, just because I can't understand something doesn't mean that there isn't a good answer or mm-hmm. there isn't a good reason. It just means I, I don't have it. And right. that's, that's a frustrating spot to be in, especially with something like this because of how many lives were ended, were, you know, just in horrible, horrible, horrible ways. And then all of the pain and suffering that rippled throughout the rest of, you know, for generations. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that's coming to my mind and, um, I'm still kind of working this out a little bit, but one of the phrases that I hear thrown around pretty easily pretty casually is that everything happens for a reason well it sounds good on a bumper sticker dave it does sound good (laughs) and but it's entirely unhelpful when someone tells you that yeah and so i i i personally have have arrived at this place of i don't agree with that i don't agree that everything happens for a reason um if i had to put a category on it the category that i would put on it or is not so much that everything happens for a reason but that god can redeem anything that happens interesting and so I'm a little bit less on the front end of things because I feel like the whole everything happens for a reason is on the front end. Yeah. And kind of there's this this great plan and that we're all just part of the great plan and we're going to allow it to unfold and we'll be a part of it. And yet, on or yet, however, on the backside is this idea of if something happens, whatever that event may be, God can redeem it. And I'll admit that there's an element of, as I say that, I want to be able to make order out of my universe. I want to make sense out of bad things that happen. Um, but I, I, I personally... I uh, feel like it, it's a better explanation, a better, uh, I don't know what. Um, je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but truly, that's, that, that's, that's where I find myself of just, God, I really don't think you intended this to happen. I, don't, I, I guess I don't believe this was part of your plan. But I do believe that you are a big God, and I do believe that you can redeem this. And um, and maybe forcing things into my own box a little bit. But as I look at the crucifixion, that's that's where I land on that. Is I I think the crucifixion was not so much a this happened for a reason, as it was God can redeem it and. 
you know, if Christians look at what Jesus said and, you know, there's clearly this dialogue of him anticipating his death. He knows he's going to be crucified. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to negate um, prophecy. I don't want to negate God uh, being bigger than time and not being constrained by this, this linear timeline that we all live by. Um, and I'll, and I'll quit my rambling at this, but for me personally, I, I, I think the fact that God can redeem anything speaks to how big he is, how awesome he is. And in my universe is a bit more palatable than the fact that everything happens for a reason because, um, I don't think that's how God operates. So, well, and I don't know if that makes sense. No, I do. Not. And again, I think it comes down <laughs> we're assigning causality to stuff because that's easier yeah, no, to I, handle. I absolutely agree with that as I'm yeah, saying. And, yeah. and you, th- you think about like, okay, if things were based on causality, then Jesus never would have come in the first place because we sinned. Right. It was our fault. Absolutely. But no, God is big enough, in your words, and I, I think in the words of the Bible, God is big enough to redeem any situation. And if he can redeem sin and yeah. its existence and its cancerous spread throughout the entire you know, human race, then he can redeem a lot of other garbage too. Um, and I think that too, like, like, especially like in my situation, like with my mom, you know, she's had MS for 20 years, 21 years, you know, and Mm -hmm. well-meaning people say everything happens for a reason. And I'm like, what's a good reason for my mom to lose complete function of her entire body being stuck in a chair while her mind is still totally capable. What's a good reason for a human being to be trapped in their own body? Yeah. I'm I'm still waiting. It's been 21 years. But when you look at it from your perspective of God can redeem any situation, does the situation still suck? Yeah, it's not fun for anybody. No one's happy about it. But it is an opportunity for my mom specifically, and then, you know, our family more generally to allow God to redeem that situation through the relationships that my mom and our family has with other people, you know, and it's a, it's an opportunity for God to work through my mom in a way that she never would have thought. Right. And it, it doesn't mean that she doesn't cry every day and it doesn't mean that she's not, you know, struggling with coming to grips with all of this. Cause like it's an ever present every morning when she wakes up. Oh yeah. I can't move my body. Um, but it's an opportunity that God can, you know, use, you know, in the lives of the people that know my mom. So it doesn't solve the situation, but it provides hope. And, um, like looking towards the future with less, looking towards the future with, with hope and encouragement that God could use my mom's situation in somebody else's life instead of looking towards the future with bitterness and anger because everything happens for a reason. And this, you know, there is no reason someone should. I have to live like that or, you know, with any of a number of other, you know, medical conditions, diseases, or just living situations, right? You know, abject poverty, no access to clean water, like no education, oppressive governments. So. Yeah. And that's, and, and so as I, you know, I come back to Romans 13 in this verse to me, there's kind of this implicit, of that those in authority do what is supposed to be done. And I think there's plenty of examples of that not happening. And NFL so, referees. Sorry. 
<laughs> I couldn't resist. Sorry. So yeah, and and just our fallibility. I mean, I know me as a law enforcement officer, I have made mistakes, and I did not mis- make those. I did not do the actions that I did uh, to frame somebody. I did not do it to um, make somebody miserable. Uh, I did not do it to tout my authority. I did not do it to, you know, proclaim my power. Um, and so there's, there's just a fallibility that goes with any human being in a position of authority. Uh, whether that be a, uh, police officer, a soldier in Jesus day, or whether it goes to, you know, a governor or a king, uh, or the president, um, yeah, God is certainly in control and is certainly aware of everything that is happening. Um, and we need to do our best to obey the law and respect authority. Um, but I don't believe that it is a, a sin to stand up to that authority when you feel that authority is being abused, when that authority... Um, does not have the best interest of humanity um, at hand, and so anyway, I think this is a this is a very interesting verse because I don't I don't feel like there's a lot like it throughout Scripture. This is one of the few places where God really kind of points. Or I'm sorry, I'm not going to totally attribute that to God. I'm going to say it's it's Paul. Um, I do believe Scripture is. God breathed and useful for correction or rebuking and correction as Timothy would tell us. But um, anyway, for me, there's a, the, the, the purpose of this verse is we don't need to rebel against authority just for the sake of rebelling. Like there's not an element of just because it's not God's authority, just because it's not God's government, just because it's not what we think would be ideal and God would put in place does not mean that we just have the right to ignore it and not obey it. Uh, But there is an element of in our um, journey with him and working working out our faith of just saying, God, I acknowledge that I'm under you. You've put these human beings in place to to govern us, to rule over us. And until there is a significant break from who you are and what you've called us to do, I'm going to live under that and do my best to glorify you um, by being obedient to the law, being obedient to the authorities. So that's where I land. Cool. I'm with you there. Don't need anarchy. No. But although Okay, never mind. <laughs> Anyways, uh I think that's uh I think that's it, Dave. I think we okay. have successfully landed this sucker somewhere somewhere Sounds near good. the the correct gate. All right, take that as a maybe. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm yeah. with you. It's all I'm good. There. I'm I didn't there. really ask a question. I just wanted to see how you'd respond. I got silence. Anyways, this has been episode 148 of the Masterclass. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Really. Honestly, truly, madly, deeply. Super cool that people listen. Still kind of weirds me out, but like in a good way. Uh, So keep listening and you can uh, still call in if you want. Um, We'll have the phone number in the show notes. Leave a voicemail and we will uh, play the audio on the show and respond. You can check out the show notes. Uh, If you're listening on pretty much any device, they're going to be right there somewhere. Slide around, scroll around, you'll find them. 
Otherwise, uh, you can go to supermegacorp.net slash masterclass slash 148, and they'll all be right there for you. If you like the show, maybe subscribe. That'd be fun. Um, but regardless, wherever you are, whenever you are, have a lovely day. Okay, bye. Bye.